Now, as wildfires continue to rage on in the Western Cape, many people have been displaced from their homes. And of course, people as well as animals and plant life have been very badly affected as their habitats have been destroyed. Now, today we brought in a very special guest, Dr. Ernst Barth from Cape Nature, to help us understand how the local biodiversity is being affected. And we thank you so much for joining us this morning, Doctor. Good morning. Good little. So, how do our indigenous fainbos react to these extreme conditions? One of uh, our guests earlier on this week said that uh, fainbos over time does need to kind of go through this purging process of uh, burning, uh, you know, as a natural cause yeah, for it to yeah. survive. So right. what's happening? How's yeah. it reacting right now? Yeah, look, let me, uh, let me start by saying is the fainbos region of South Africa is really a very special um, area. I mean, it is unique in the world. There's no, no other place like this. And having involved in this particular climate that we have, the Mediterranean climate, mm -hmm. with our very dry um, uh, and hot winters, uh, summers, summers yes. and the, the cool, wet winters and so on, um, it made for a very unique ecosystem. So the fainbos is very much adapted mm -hmm. to these cycles and so on. And, but the fact of the matter is that fainbos must burn. If it doesn't burn, it'll die eventually. So I think, uh, the, the, for me, one of the take home messages always is not all fires are bad fires. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's why, I mean, you're quite correct in saying is that uh, throughout the time, the Feinbos has, uh, has, has adapted um, to these cycles. And uh, so fire is a natural, it's a fire-driven ecosystem, as we, we say in yes. more scientific terms. And, uh, and therefore, um, the, but the problem at this stage is that what, what, uh, what seems to be a, an e increasing problem is the frequency of the fires. Yes. And therefore, uh, at the moment, we are really very worried. We're getting more and more concerned about the fact that more and more fires happen more and more, more often. More often, yeah. And that, unfortunately, does not allow for the plants that are adapted to like 10 to 15 year um, fire cycles can't grow up quickly enough. Right spread their seed or flower, spread their seeds and actually raise young uh, plants to flower again. Yeah. And unfortunately, when that cycle is broken, especially for some of the proteas and, and many of the other plant species, mm -hmm. then biodiversity damage, as we call Absolutely, it. Absolutely, because then you yeah. think that the extension of that is that animal life is affected because now well, of food sources are impacted on. So how yeah. has the animal yeah. population been affected? Look, the, the animals obviously also have evolved in, in this uh, uh, ecoregion and so on. So many of the, many of the uh, types of animals uh, are pretty well adapted uh, to, these, to these dry summers and the wet winters and so on. We have uh, seen over the last few years that uh, frogs, uh, unfortunately our frogs in the mountains, they, mm -hmm. they, they're not really coping that well with, with these frequent fires. Mm -hmm. They take a long time to recover again. But birds, for, for example, again, they, <coughs> they are able to, uh, to take flight and, and you know, exit these areas. Same goes for mammals. Unfortunately, reptiles, uh, the lizards, the snakes and the, and the, and the, the tortoises and so on, they, they don't always do that well. Lizards and snakes, um, they can hide away, but yes. tortoises, unfortunately, they, <laughs> they can't out, outrun the fire, and uh, they're usually at the short end. But they've got other adaptations yes. to, to these climate changes, uh, these climates and so on, yeah. that, that they deal with. So, generally speaking, I think one can say that the animals are reasonably well adapted, but again, once again, the, the fact that our fires are happening more, more frequently, frequently yeah. that becomes a, the, the problem because the plants and the animals cannot... Um, adapt quickly, quickly enough, enough. To, to these changing times. And then when this happens in nature, usually the spillover effect comes into our own lives. You're talking about lizards and snakes that find ways <clears throat> to hide away from these extreme yeah. temperatures yeah. and conditions, most likely in your home. So what do you do <laughs> when you find these uh, animals in your, in your, on your property? Who do you call? What's the safest approach to go about it? Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's perhaps, perhaps a difficult question to answer, but I think that the, the, the bottom line is that when these wild animals actually seek refuge and so on, and it comes and sort of come into the urban edge, yes. one has to be obviously uh, pretty careful about them. So, you know, obviously we've got uh, a, a number of venomous snakes that you just can't sort of handle and so, and, and so on. Yeah. And then, of course, your, uh, your other animals, like your little bokis and everything, um, best from, from, from our point of view, from Cape Nature's point of view, the advice would be to, during times of, of big fires and uh, disaster management um, and, and fire brigade mm -hmm. and uh, volunteer fire services uh, going around in municipalities and Cape Nature, yes. sand parks and so on, is to call your local fire agency or your f fire association and so on and actually get some veterinarian um, to, to come and assist or somebody that knows how to handle yes. wildlife. I An think expert. that would be my advice. 
is not to just uh, try and pick up everything and take it somewhere. Okay. Uh, it could be to the detriment of, uh, of the animals as well. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us this morning, Dr. Bart. And also, I think quite ironic to realize that the incidence of all of these fires also coincides with the massive drought that we're experiencing in South Africa. So, so much more the need for us to be careful with our resources and to be cognizant about the way that we interact and live within nature. Well, there's still lots more to come this morning. Here's what's coming up.